Good morning, everyone. This is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. It's Wednesday, May 6, 2020. And my name is Trisha Gordon. I'm at the University of Virginia, and I'm here with Charles Bristow from Illinois State University um, to lead the help facilitate this meeting. Good we're morning. Gonna, yeah, thank you, Charles. Charles is going to take notes for me today, and I'm I'm I'll be the primary in the primary voice, I guess. Um, but first, let's get started with some announcements, and I see somebody's already um, putting some information in there. So yep, that was me. Oh, Hi, everybody. Um, so just some reminders. Uh, first off, about Open Aperio. Um, I've announced this on the core team call and maybe a couple of other places, but um, the official announcement like to all the listeners and stuff has yet to go out but we have pivoted to completely online um, and so um, it will go forward as a conference in the same week but the schedule is significantly different because it was modified to make it um, a little bit easier to um, account for multiple time zones especially in Europe and other places um, outside the US so um, the agenda has um, been modified a little bit and the registration fees are significantly less um, the uh, the standard rate I believe for the um, member standard um, rate is 59 I think and then there's also a, um, a discount for um, presenters and there's uh, an early bird rate as well which I think is 39 the official numbers will be posted soon they were all made relatively low because we know that a lot of institutions have kind of frozen their budgets and they're not um, allocating anything for any sort of travel related um, conferences and even though this travel this doesn't involve travel it's you know usually comes from the same pool of money for professional development so um so we wanted it to be low enough cost that people could if they needed to pay it out of their own pocket without a huge burden if their institution wasn't funding any sort of um, conferences and there is also um, if you do need financial assistance even with the lower fees um, there is sort of a, um, a request form that's going up where you can request uh, kind of a scholarship and um, and have uh, you know some assistance in paying for the the registration so um so all those options are available and again it is going to be online and we'll be posting an updated um schedule uh soon probably this week and um so anyway so i hope that you guys uh if you've not yet registered that you'll think about doing so um it is still going to be a, a, a good um event there's a lot of interesting sessions going on and uh so i hope that you'll attend um well i have a question yeah um when will the cutoff be for that registration for that uh, the early bird rate i think is like the third week of may i want to say i don't remember the exact date um, I'm, it, I'm actually at the website and it's may 26th thank you, thank you. Okay, thanks. And that's the early bird, Adam. Is that the early bird, Adam? Sorry, I mute and unmute. Uh, yes, that is the early bird. Okay, okay, thanks. That's what I thought. Yeah, so you still got time. Plenty of time to get your, your registrations in. Um, and if you if you already did register and you paid either the full rate for the in-person event when that was still being uh, planned or if you got the uh, initial discount for the online option the, there will be re refunds available so um, you'll be getting some information from the conference um, team on how to request a refund so um, so no worries that you'll, you'll get get your money back if you already paid <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, the other announcement is regarding focus groups. We've, we've been working, and, and for those of you who were at um, the virtual conference and you saw the Sakai Garden um, presentation that Michael Green did, that was kind of a, uh, you know, 
call to action to focus on the UI. And so we've been, we've had a design team that's been meeting regularly to um, really work on a new fresh look for Sakai 21. And we have a UX designer um, that Longsight has brought on board to help us reimagine the interface. And um, as part of that work, we've been doing um, focus groups every Friday. And uh, each Friday we look at different wireframes, different mock-ups. Um, so if you've participated in some of them before, you might want to come back again. It'll be different stuff to look at. We'll be a little further down the road because what we're doing is iterating on these designs. So um, so I do encourage you, and there's a link in the Etherpad um, for the sign-up form, or actually it's a Calendly link, so you can see the dates and the times. Um, but the instructor or admin ones are, are 10 a.m. on Fridays. And then the student ones, we have a, they aren't every week for the student because we didn't know how many students we would actually get. But we do have a few of them scheduled. Um, and so if you do have any students that you know um, that might be willing to participate in that, please encourage them to sign up because we really, really want student feedback. And it's hard to get sometimes because it's hard to get the students to attend these sorts of things. But, um, but we'd love to um, get more student feedback. So with that, and I believe Josh is here, so yay. Um, <laughs> so I'm here, gonna, sorry about that. No worries. Um, so uh, the first part of the agenda, and we won't take the whole time because I know we've got a bunch of JIRAs in here to talk about. Um, so we don't want to belabor the point, but we did want to talk about it a little bit and get some feedback from folks um, to see, you know, what sort of interest is there in the community for a Microsoft Teams integration with Sakai? Um, and if you're using Teams, what are you using it for? Is it a Zoom replacement? Is it a Slack replacement? I mean, how are you utilizing that and how could you envision um, implementing it on your campus? And, um, and Josh, I don't know if you want to add anything else. No, I don't think so. I mean, so there, there's a little bit of community backdrop here, which is that, um, well, there, there's there's a bit of competitive analysis, which is that uh, several, several of our competitors have uh, released already Teams integrations and have talked about it a lot. Um, you know, so so that's that, that's there's a piece of that. But on the other hand, I don't want to do. It doesn't make any sense to do something just because our competitors do it. We need to do it because we need it also. Um, so, but EDF responding to that, you know, sort of market driver uh, did some analysis of what a Teams integration would take, and so I I linked the document that they provided in the call notes. Um, it says, you know, EDF functionality analysis, and there's a link there, so you can you can take a peek if you want. Um, but uh, Miguel launched a uh, survey to see what people needed at the height of the pandemic. And of course, people were dealing with the height of the pandemic and not answering the survey. So the results of the survey indicate that there's little to no interest in this and little use of Teams, which, you know, so I think that, you know, it'd be useful for, for TNL to, dig into that is that true you know is that really the you know should that be guiding our our directions you know so i think that's kind of the the the, the genesis of this conversation cool so are you going do you want to do anything on that google doc or you just want to have a conversation I think just a conversation for now. I mean, it's never fun to like shove a dock at people and say, look, comment thoughtfully. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I've, I've got a couple of questions, you know, and, you know, Wilma and I have talked about this sort of, you know, generally, and she and I will just, you know, shove things at you as we do sometimes. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm curious first of the folks that are here, um, which of you actually have teams implemented at your institutions? I know that Duke does, uh, who others? UVA does. Uh, Walsh University does. ISU Providence. does. Providence College does. Others? Although I have to say that. I don't know if you got all the ones. Uh, the RWU, chat. Western. I mean, so like basically everyone uh, here has teams. Yeah. Um, and Heather makes the point that. 
uh, Teams is not great, um, but people at my school teams seem to use it. I mean, so like that's the interesting thing, right? I mean, so um, is it the thing that you choose? Maybe, maybe not, but it kind of comes free with some of your other Microsoft licenses. Um, so the, and Brock, thank you. So, so the follow on question, um, well, all right. So the first question is who has Teams? And the, the next question is who uses Teams for teaching? A lot of institutions use it uh, for administrative purposes, but not all of them use, them use Teams for teaching. I think the goal at UVA is to someday do that, but right now our students don't have Office 365 accounts. They have Google accounts, while everybody else has Office 365. So it's not an option really for the courses right now. Heather makes a good point that if you have a Microsoft license, you get it for free. So um, it's it might not be as good as Zoom or as good as Slack, but if it's free, it's better than paying for something if you have no budget. <laughs> or if you want to use your budget for other things. I mean, like, look at the announcement out of Rice that says that they're going to put, uh, you know, streaming technology in every single classroom. I mean, that's like, you know, 15K a room. You know, so if you can use Teams instead of something else that you have to pay for, that's, that's a pretty compelling argument. I was just wanting to ask folks who are not actively talking, if you could go ahead and mute your mic to minimize background, thanks. So let's see, we're getting some other comments in the chat. Uh, Sean Platt from Roger Williams writes, uh, yeah, our, our students are on Google. So you've got the, uh, the, the UVA situation. Um, so, Let's see, so we've heard from, so we know about Duke and UVA and uh, RWU. Um, so let's see, so so Walsh had an increase in use, right? Um, Jennifer, I, I, didn't, I didn't botch the school yeah. that you're with, right? No, yeah, that's Walsh. Um, we actually had an increase when we went remote. So I think people kind of found it on our Office 365. Um, we did have a question of why we weren't using it, but we found this is a good time for IT to vet it. And we've already found like a few little things that are not as good. Like you can't have a huge meeting. It says you can, but it doesn't always work as well as Zoom. Um, uh, there's some little things like there's an assignment. I always wonder about that assignments on, on Teams versus if it was in uh, Sakai, how would you determine the difference? And there's a couple of things that are shared between Teams and Sakai, but our users mostly, I think, are using it for the video piece and the chat. That is an interesting insight. Um, so, um, Heather, I'm I'm curious. You know, knowing that that you guys use uh, use Teams, do you use it for video and chat? Also, are there other use cases that are prominent at Duke? Just chat. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, all right, so Mark writes, um, Brock has been making use of Teams to facilitate group work, breakout sessions, and office hours. Interesting. Does that belong under your question in what way are teams used? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, I think I'm going to say, you know, um, yes, because I'm going to combine the two questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. But yeah, I mean, so. But they are I different think, questions. They, they absolutely are. I mean, so I guess we'll make the assumption that those who have a use case for teams and teaching are actually using it for teaching. But yeah, you're right. Um, uh, so let's see. So we heard from Duke, UVA, Walsh, ISU, um, uh, RWU, Brock. Uh, so let's see. Adam and Sean, what do you guys know about uh, your use of Teams? So Sean writes in the chat, uh, chat and video <clears throat> and some file sharing. 
video chat and file sharing is what's most popular, but um, we adopted Teams because of its security posture and security in Office 365, but we're also disallowing people from creating ad hoc teams. So in a way we're hamstringing our own use of it. Um, I find it clunky uh, and I'm not aware of Teams use in curricular settings. Ah, okay, okay. Um, Do we know if uh, Microsoft Teams has uh, LTI touch points? So that's where the document would give us some insights. <clears throat> I apologize that I haven't digested as fully as maybe I wanted to. Um, Wilbin, did you know the answer to this? Um, I, I was under the impression that it was sort of LTI with special sauce, like it wasn't strictly LTI, it had some additional things to it, but I'm not 100% sure that that's correct. I mean, well, as I'm scanning through the EDF doc, uh, there's very little reference to LTI. It looks like it's, it's an API integration. And I have to say that the LTI integration with Zoom doesn't have full parity with uh, Zoom functionality on the web because not all features are currently exposed via their app, which is called LTI Pro. But given our rapid adoption of Zoom and the um, speed with which we were able to add Zoom as a tool, an LTI tool in Sakai, um, really helped ease the transition to remote teaching and learning. And functionality in Zoom, such as breakout rooms, which is currently non-existent in Teams, has really fostered it as a pedagogical tool. I mean, so that, that that's an interesting question, right? So, um, you know, Woods. So let me let me ask you guys this. I mean, so, you know, you don't we wouldn't choose to do a Teams integration in a vacuum. I mean, it's always you know time that would be taken away from something else. I mean, so you know, a question would be, you know, would a better thing be to attempt a partnership with Zoom to do an LTI plus API integration that would be you know, that would be tighter and better. I mean, so I haven't talked to them. Are they are they willing? Are they interested in partnering? Don't have a clue. But what do people think? You know, if uh, you know, if people are generally saying Teams not as good as Zoom, uh, you know, not as widely implemented as Zoom, uh, Zoom integration, not as extent, not as capable as we'd like. Um, you know, is the is the better path to at least determine whether Zoom is interested in a partnership and think that through? It would be interesting to know if Zoom were amenable to that. They seem to have a handle on the LTI integration and what's required in order to bring it to parity. They've introduced features like breakout rooms where that choice is not exposed when creating a meeting via the LTI front end. Um, but it could be a partnership. It could be a conversation. It depends on what you would be looking to do via an API hook. Yeah, we've but had several re made requests to Zoom before, they're very responsive. Um, although right now, I we just got an email this morning from them that they're restricting their support a little bit. But, um, you know, I think if enough people are asking for uh, features in the LTI integration, they will, they are, they are attentive. Request. And we, we hear there, so in the chat, Jennifer writes uh, um, that it, she agrees with Adam that the, the LTI integration is for Zoom is uh, a little bit less functional. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Heather writes that Zoom is probably pretty busy and might not have time for us. Um, you know, let's see. Um, yeah, and, and Adam Adam agrees with that. Mark, I'm I'm struggling with the Oh, I see. The course provisioning tool for Teams. Interesting. Um, did you ever contribute that, Mark? It uh, so it's unrelated to Sakai. Um, it oh, creates I see. yeah, and so it uses uh, Brock's centralized information to 
uh, create uh, course constructs within Teams that we, in an otherwise a very analog fashion, link students to uh, from Sakai because Sakai is an easier touch point uh, currently. Got it. But there's there's no integration between the two whatsoever, other than uh, a static link. So no, we didn't contribute that back. <laughs> um, okay. Well, it's it's ten twenty three. Um, I, I, I want to. I'm worried that we're taking a bit too much time from Jira's. I don't feel. You know, it seems like the bottom line is there's some use of Teams for teaching. It's it's uh, free, but not as capable as some of your you know your other options. Um, I haven't heard you know a huge groundswell of support for a Teams integration, but we haven't necessarily you know posed the question that way either. Um, so why don't why don't we say this? I am curious for the folks who are here, who would give a thumbs up uh, in, to a Teams integration? You know, so if the if the proposal on the table is a Teams integration, you know, would bring benefit to Sakai and bring benefit to our institutions, and I would support it. Um, which of you would give a thumbs up to that proposal? Maybe those of you who who would would put a plus one in the comments. Seems like there's there's pretty general support for this, you know. Yeah, Sean says depends on what it looks like. Yeah, sure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, devil devil meat details. Um, Adam says plus half. Um, you know, way to way, way to sit on the fence there. Um, okay, so it sounds to me that you know. So Sean has also argued resending the survey, argued for resending the survey, and that that might be a smart thing to do also. Um, yeah, it it sounds to me that it would be worth asking EDF to pursue this a little bit further and, uh, you know, see whether, you know, give us something else to look at, you know, so essentially say, you know, all right, is this, um, you know, given this kind of an approach, you know, would you, you know, would you support that, you know, getting from the conceptual to the, the slightly more known conceptual. Um, I okay. think I think we've conflated Zoom and, and Teams in this conversation a little bit. So I think Charles was referring to the partnership with Zoom to get more of their features in their LTI. Yep. But yes. the question right now is about Teams. <clears throat> Sorry, my internet cut out for a second and I didn't quite catch what Josh said. So sorry about that. That's okay. I think we're... I think we're good. I think the question right now is whether to resend the survey. Is that right, Josh? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it seems like there's not a downside. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll see if Miguel is willing to do that since it's his survey. Great. Okay, well, uh, I think we should move on to our Jira Palooza. Otherwise we're gonna run completely out of time and you know, they take a while. Can I can I ask one? Uh, can I make one request before we move on to Jira Palooza? Oh sure. And uh, you know, so assuming that the survey gets sent, will those of you who are here commit to answering it? Yes. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, um, some smart person named Wilma put. Uh, yeah. I have a question on here um, about before we kind of dive into the JIRAs, and this is something that came up at the COVID or at the court call yesterday um, about uh, in light of COVID, are there any JIRAs that we want to prioritize, particularly looking at Samago? Because um, Sean had pointed out that there were a whole lot of Samago JIRAs that came up in triage. Um, uh -huh. Is, is that mm -hmm. something that we want as a community to to kind of focus on? And, you know, are there any particular pain points that we want to surface um, to maybe put a COVID label on it in JIRA or something to get more developer attention on it? So I, I'm really interested in, um, in the one that I listed there. 
43614. We've had a number of um, issues where instructors had a student pro having a problem taking test and uh, the student ran out of time, the test got submitted by the timer and the instructor just wanted the student to start over from where they left off and finish it. And you can't do that. They have to start from scratch with a retake. And so this is a request to allow a starting from the middle <laughs> with a retake. Uh, and you know, if they wanted to, a shorter time limit using an exception. Interesting. Would other people agree that that's a common request? Let's see, Jennifer says yes. Adam says yes. Emphatic yeses. <laughs> yeah, we had several instructors who were really upset about uh, the inability to do this. Um, one had a huge number of students, and she actually edited and retracted the test and had to redo it without a time limit to use the horrible uh, convoluted workaround that is possible to sort of achieve what she wants. Um, so uh, can, can we, um, Charles, can you give me present? Oh, you did, thank you. I'm going to share the JIRA. We'll go ahead and look at it. Well, Trish is pulling that up. Just a quick note. Um, some of the uh, JIRAs in the list here were ones that I had um, added. I just did a feature request search. Um, and this was a few weeks back. And we didn't get to them all in the last year of Palooza, so we kind of carried them over. But if there That's are funny. ones that people have added recently that you would rather talk about, feel free to skip down to the newer ones that, that were added recently. <laughs> So I'm especially interested in the top two that I listed there, this one um, with the retake and also the resources hide content during specific dates um, because uh, it's come up a few times where instructors um, tried to hide from one date to another. And of course that doesn't work. You have to show it from one date to another and then come back in and show it from a different date if you wanna have it hidden between a certain period. Um, and we've had several instructors um, who encountered this during this semester, and they have a very particular use case that they want things hidden during exams. Um, so I think it's a pretty important uh, feature to um, make work. Now we're in trouble. She left me in charge. <laughs> Sorry, Tiffany. I was just trying to read through the JIRA a little bit. Um, so you're proposing for the resources one to um, add a date field for the hide item, just like on the show item? Yeah, that's right. So for a, a long time, it looked like you could choose either to show from a date to a date or hide from a date to a date. And that was a problem because you can't actually hide from a date to a date. Um, but uh, these instructors have a use case to uh, hide all their resources content during a test. So um, I think it's important to actually make that work instead of just make it more evident that it can't work. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a good feature. I don't know how other folks feel. It would certainly be useful.
Okay. Is Nandy? <sighs> so, so let me just circle back to the first one because I don't think we kind of closed on that. I think we kind of transitioned into the second Jira. Um, the Samago one about starting wherever they left off. Is there general agreement that that's a good thing that we want to prioritize? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah. we can hear you. So I'm, I'm guessing that people are just are not familiar enough with the issue to make a, a choice right now. Yeah. I, I'm just wondering if we should put the TL reviewed label on it before we leave oh. this Jira or make a I, comment. I this did. Was the put, one. Oh, yeah. did you already? Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, I needed to refresh. Sorry, I kept losing. So I can't share my screen, it looks like, without losing audio. But <laughs> Should I try? Um, sure. You can be that great. Let me get to that. Uh, to I, I'm going to give you a presenter. Yeah. So we should, probably, we should probably Price. put a comment on the Samago Jira. Would you like me to do that? Yes, since I missed some of the conversation, if you could make that comment here, Wilma, that'd be helpful. Thanks. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted me to try to share. Adam, you might want to mute because we can hear your background. Uh, Charles, can you give Tiffany presenter privileges? Yep. Done. Thank you. And you are muted, Tiffany, just in case you didn't know that. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Uh, yes. I see multiples of your screen. <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's what happens when you're still in the uh, presentation, I guess. I guess. Okay. okay. Can you now see the uh, Samago Jira? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank okay. you. You zoom in a little bit so you can read the same. Oh, that'd be helpful. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, let me skip past the testing steps, I guess. Um, and so Wilma was going to add a comment, and maybe you already did that, Wilma. Yep, I just added it. So okay. Okay. So Tiffany, so, sorry, go ahead. Um, the proposal is to have two uh, check boxes or, or sort of options pop up, potentially a pop up confirmation window on the allow retake um, version of it um, to allow students with uh, multiple submissions to see their answers submitted during the last take when they when they resubmit. Um, so uh, this would require two locations for this one in the settings. Um, some kind of checkbox, like if multiple submissions or a retake are allowed, students will start each new submission with their responses from the last attempt already entered. Obviously, that text is too long, but I don't know how to make it shorter with still making it clear. <laughs> and then another option on the allow retake page uh, for allowing an individual student uh, to uh, retake that response with their responses uh, from the last attempt already entered. Okay. And do you want to keep sharing for us, Tiffany? Do we have any more discussion sure. on this? I think we're done with sure, that. If you'd one. like me to. I would. Okay. So let's move on to your next one, 33842. Hiding 
until function and resources does not work with dates. Mm -hmm. So, so, to to see that. so in the um, the show hide uh, resources edit details page, um, there was a problem before where um, the the dates, the from and until dates, were sort of underneath show and hide. And it looked like the user could select, you know, hide this item from this date to this date. Uh, the problem with that was it only, these from and until only work if you're showing the item or uh, for a folder, show this folder, but allow, or hide this folder, but allow access to its contents. So there are two settings for a folder and one for a file that will allow you to um, show things or hide things to, from a specific date to a specific date. Um, but if you select hide and then those dates, it doesn't work. Um, and we have some instructors who uh, want to hide resources, materials during a test. So they really want to hide it from the start of the test to the end of the test and have it visible every other time. Um, but in order to accomplish that, they have to show it until the start date of the test. Then after the start date of the test, they have to go back in and edit it and show it from the end date of the test. So it's kind of a convoluted uh, workaround to achieve a goal that should be achievable just by hiding from and until a certain set of dates. So what what's the proposed solution? To make hide from until work. <laughs> 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 to fix the problem that that previously was being caused by by people, you know, choosing the wrong option and getting confused. When it failed, you know, it, it would they they'd essentially put in a date and then it would silently erase it without them knowing. Um, after they selected hide this item in its contents or hide or hide this folder in its contents or hide this item. Well, it, it should work. And if it's causing confusion, then. The point is that the way it was addressed, the, the way the confusion was addressed was a poor substitute to move the dates to only be next to show this folder. By the way, you can still select hide this folder, then select a date and input it, and it will still erase it when you uh, save. Um, so the problem's still there. It hasn't really been addressed because originally in like back in Sakai 2 or 10 or something like that, when you selected show this item, then the date boxes appeared. They didn't appear all the time on the screen like they do now. No, yeah. So, so there are a couple of options, uh, you know, show this folder and hide this folder, but allow access to its contents. Both of these work with the from and until. Right now, that's not clear. No. Um, and uh, hide this folder and its contents won't work with dates, but people can still select the dates when that's selected. Right. Uh, so anyway, the, the solution that was made to deal with the confusion and problem was this one, which I don't think is very good. Uh, really, the, the boxes should be just hidden if you can't use them. Um, but I just want to make this one work. <laughs> Hide this folder and its contents with the dates uh, work. But you That's do want most intuitive it. thing. You want it to work with dates. Yeah, exactly. So do you think there should be a separate set of dates or just that those dates would work no matter which of those buttons you chose? The latter, that the dates okay. would work based on which button you chose. So if you chose show this folder from this date to this date, that's when it becomes visible. That's when it becomes hidden. If you choose hide but allow access to its contents uh, from this date, that's when it you know, starts being hidden until this date is when it you know, stops being hidden or whatever. Uh, and the same thing for this uh, hide and, and its contents. That makes perfect sense.
Yeah, I would agree that that makes a lot of sense. Um, although I don't like the placement of where the dates are, I think they should be um, probably they only show up next to the item that you've selected after you choose the radio button. Yes, that's uh, yeah, exactly. And I mean, this one's kind of confusing because really it's showing contents from this date to this date. The folder's always remaining hidden, uh, regardless of what, which dates you select. Uh, let me show you how it looked in, in when the problem existed, because that'll maybe clarify some uh, why it was a problem in the first place. So here's the problem uh, that existed in an earlier version of Sakai. We had the show, hide, from, until. The only options this works with are the first two, but you could still select this, from, until. Looks like it'll work. Update. When you go back in here and edit the details again, my dates are gone. So this is where the users were falling into the trap of hiding the folder and its contents. They thought they could hide it starting, you know, on the 6th that today at 1044 and show it again after the second date. Um, but that didn't work. And so they were thinking it was failing. Well, it was, I mean, because it, it's not designed to work that way. But yeah, I like not this. I like this UI if we can get the, the last option to work with the dates. Yeah, I do too. I prefer that um, organization it's, it's better. It, it's really more, clean and organized. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so they just need to put it back, but make it work. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So this this feature yeah. never worked. Uh, the hide and from until never worked, and that was the problem. Uh, so instead, they put it to you know what it is now, where it's next to show this folder, but uh, not, unfortunately, next to this one, which does also work with it. <laughs> so. Tiffany, if you could, uh, after our meeting, add a screenshot of of what we want it to look like, mm -hmm. um, then we can comment in the JIRA and say, this is what we want it to look like, and we want it to work for all of the options. Sure. Um, and I think that's our comment. Sounds good. Okay, great. Thank you. Let's see what is next. Um, so now we have many, many more JIRAs. I don't know if anybody has a preference for any of these to discuss next since we have limited time. We have about 10 minutes or so left to work on these. Anybody have one they want to float to the top? Well, All right. Oh, go ahead. Uh, 41297 is something we discussed a long time ago um, that has kind of reared its ugly head again. And I put a, um, the, the discussion the last time was that I was to put in a mock-up and some, uh, some uh, instructions, testing steps mm -hmm. uh, for it. And so I've added those uh, yesterday. And uh, if we could take a look at that, that would be nice but <laughs> four one two nine seven mm -hmm. yeah Thanks. that's oh. um when you're on the questions editing screen and tests and quizzes you can't edit um, special scoring options uh, namely things like partial credit minimum point value and negative marking and in fact minimum points and negative marking are not visible on that editing screen right now so let me show you what it looks like. So if, oh, well, calculated questions are not a good option because they don't have either of those. So hold on, let me find a, a different test. Um, something with multiple choice. All right, so if I go in here and edit this question, and um, oh, it does have a minimum point value. So this has a minimum point value, but that's not apparent to the instructor on um, on the editing question screen. So if I go back here to my question screen, I have no idea that there's a minimum point value. 
And I can actually create problems with this. So I could change this question point value to five. The minimum point value is still in there. So now when a student answers this question, they'll get 10 points, even though it's only worth five. Um, that's actually a bug. It should be <laughs> checking for that. So on this page, it does perform a check. It'll tell you that, you know, hey, you can't save with that 10 point. You know, if I go down here and try to save, well, okay, it's letting me save. That's weird. I don't know why. Uh, it shouldn't. But anyway, it should be, there should be an error that says, uh, you can't save a minimum point value greater than answer point value. Um, but when you have a, a test where you've enabled these in a bunch of different questions and you can't see it here, um, it's very easy to make this, this error that I just showed you where the um, minimum points are greater than the answer points, for example. Um, and so I'm proposing to add text boxes for these. Um, on that questions editing screen so that you have the special scoring indicated um, with a text box to edit it if it's negative marking or minimum points. And for partial credit, because there's multiple text boxes required to do that just to tell them uh, that there is a special scoring setting of partial credit on those multiple choice uh, affected questions and that you have to edit the question to modify it. I think that a really nice solution. Because I think it, it would minimize the, the amount of potential error uh, that instructors uh, have when they have to edit every single question to see those uh, settings um, and, uh, and also allow them to do it more quickly if they, if they need to do it, change it. Uh, any objections from anyone for these changes? Once again, sounds eminently reasonable. <laughs> okay. I'll comment. Okay. Thanks, Tiffany. All right. We probably have time for one more. Um, if no one else has any particular one they want to talk about, Tiffany, I'll invite you to talk about yours. <laughs> Since you're the one sharing. Which one do you want to go to next? Um, well, we could continue on the Samago, but we haven't had very many requests for this recently. Um, are there any in the list that are particularly important um, with all the online remote learning that's going on? Uh, those were the ones that I mentioned uh, before that yeah, have know, really for, come up. Any of the remaining ones that would be would lend um, themselves to that. Probably the messages issue. So, um, which one is that? Messages no. uh, four, three, five, six, five. Mm -hmm. um, we had a couple of instructors who wanted students to just be allowed to send email to the instructor and not to each other. Um, but the messages permissions, the most restrictive option in messages permissions, is to allow the student to send messages to users in own groups. The problem with this for courses is that own group users includes the class roster. And so that forcibly requires the student to be able to email or to message other students uh, because they're all on the same roster. Uh, and this the, the couple of instructors who made the request just want the students to uh, receive and send messages from instructors and TAs. Um, so I'm suggesting to have a, a new permission to allow um, them to send to users in specific roles only. 
and then uh, an option in the settings tab to um, to choose who which roles they can send to. If that makes sense. I can show you in messages what the these pages look like. Um, that would be helpful. Would it make <clears throat> more sense to have a just a, a setting that would disallow sending to the entire roster? Because well, it seems to me I still I still might want to be able to have students send to you know instructors, TAs, etc., and to members of their own group that they would still have that option. Because it sounds like if you if you restricted it entirely to instructors, maintainers, then they can't send messages to their own group uh, either. Well, I mean, you could you could allow send to users in the student role, right? Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the problem with it because you can well, you can also set a, a group permissions. So you could go to the group permissions and override at the site level, I guess, to allow send to that own group. Um, but yeah, that's that's exactly the problem. Because a roster is a group, all of these permissions about group sending don't apply properly uh, in the way that the instructor expects. Does that make sense? What if you made it a hidden group? That doesn't help. So even if the group is hidden, if you allow send to own group users, which is, as I mentioned, the most restrictive one, those members are still listed, um, even if you hide the roster group from because it's it's who's hidden in the two line. When you hide a, a group, it just hides that element from the two line, so it would hide the title of the group in the two line, basically, instead of hiding the membership of the group, the users in the group. Uh, here, let me get a student. Um, in this site and see, try and show you what that looks like. So here I'm a student with the permission send to own group users and you can see I've got the TAs and instructors here, and also all the other students on my roster. I don't see the, the title of the roster because I'm not allowed to send to own groups. That would give me the, the roster name as a recipient. But I can still send all the individuals in that roster. And that's that's where the instructor wants it to be more specific. He wants to be able to specify only instructors and TAs. Uh, yeah, it almost these, seems like there should just be a permission that says exactly that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, the problem instructors and TAs. The problem with that is project sites. So maybe a project site wants you to only send to administrators and owners, or you know, maintainers, or whatever the role is called generally. So if it just says only allow send to instructors, does it no longer apply to project sites? Or does it apply to anyone with section dot rolled out instructor, which would include the maintainers and project sites? Yeah, I think you'd want something broad enough More to like apply. The yeah, yeah well, usually that permissions tab will show you whatever roles are in the site. Um, so right. if there's no instructors, it's not going to show that as a column. Right, so that's why I'm saying the name of the permission has to be broad yeah. enough to encompass whatever roles, you know, maybe site good. site maintainers or site administrators or something. I'm along wondering, those lines. almost like if you could have maybe like a multi-select box or something where you it displays the roles specific to that site, and you choose the ones from a list or something. I, I kind of think that permission screen could maybe use some work. Yeah, um, let me go back to my instructor um, side of that, and uh, we can look at that 
uh, setting screen, which also impacts the permissions, like you were mentioning the um, hidden groups. Um, so the settings does have this, you know, groups hidden in the to field, where you can choose which groups you want to hide uh, from that list. And see, I did put the the rosters in there, but that student can still send to everyone on the roster. Um, we have just a couple more minutes, so we probably want to wrap this one up. So I think what I'm hearing is that we might want to mull this over a little bit and figure out how to set enhance the permissions to accomplish the desired goal of letting students only send messages to a selected role. Yeah, Something I think like that. that makes sense. But I think we need to spend a little more time figuring out the best way to do that that's clear to the end user. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. We'll put a comment in the JIRA for that. Um, I guess I'll just do that really quickly. Okay, so we are a minute away from our time. So uh, thank everybody for being here today and for contributing to our conversation around JIRAs and also the Teams integration. Um, just as a reminder, our next meeting is on May 20th, and we are, Oh, we do have a presenter. It is Alistair Hendricks. Uh, he's going to present on a Sakai compatible iPhone app. Um, that should be pretty interesting. Where is Alistair from? Charles, do you know? I'm him? not sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe we can find that out before our next meeting. Um, yeah, I will. So, yeah. So June 3rd, <laughs> we have a, an opening for topics that could all we could always come back to our long list of JIRAs um, and then I am assuming that the third Wednesday in June will be um, open aperio so we won't have a meeting that week but um, so yeah if you have any topics you want to hear more about um, let Charles or me know um, or Wilma and we can put them on the agenda for June 3rd in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great day and, uh, you know, stay safe and healthy, please, and hope to see you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye.